On September 1, 1939, Nazi Germany invaded Poland, launching Europe into World War II. Two days later, Britain and France declared war on Germany. The Polish army surrendered to the Germans on October 6th of that same year, but the country of Poland never officially surrendered. Large portions of the Polish military fled to the Baltic nations and France. Adolf Hitler immediately ordered an attack on France, but his offensive was postponed until spring 1940. On May 10th, Hitler's Nazi Germany invaded France. Allied troops from all over Europe were pushed back to Paris and then to the coast. Britain evacuated hundreds of thousands of military refugees from Dunkirk from May 26th to June 4th. Barely one month later, in early July of 1940, Nazi Germany began what was to become known as the Battle of Britain. Germany's air force, called the Luftwaffe, began bombing harbors along Britain's east coast. The British Royal Air Force, especially the RAF Fighter Command, fought furiously. By September of 1940, the Nazis switched their targets to large British cities. This continued for almost a year, lasting until May of 1941. Terrifying civilians with wave after wave of night bombings called the Blitz, German bombers left large portions of London in rubble. Part of the Battle of Britain was fought on the radio, and propaganda stars on both sides were created. Many are familiar with Germany's Dresden doll, Ronelda von Fallenberg, who was swept up by the Nazi party when she was a theater star in Berlin. Britain had its own silk voices that preyed on the emotional weaknesses of enemy pilots. One was Marguerite auf der Heide. Und nochmals, guten Abend. Hier spricht Margarete auf der Heide. Ich richte mich an die Piloten und Mannschaften der Kampfflugzeuge, die sich momentan in der Luft befinden, in Vorbereitung eines erneuten Bombardements von London und Umgebung habe ich mich jeden Abend an sie gewendet, habe sie angefleht, mit dem, was sie tun, aufzuhören und nach Deutschland zurückzukehren, ohne weitere unschuldige Menschen zu ermorden. Hierzu gehören viele Kinder. Meine Worte sind bisher auf taube Ohren gestoßen. Am heutigen Abend ändert sich der Inhalt meiner Botschaft. Ich weiß, Sie glauben, dass Sie nur dem Befehl Ihrer Vorgesetzten folgen, aber das entschuldigt nicht diese grässliche Zerstörung. The resolve of Britain was strong. By the summer of 1941, German attacks subsided. On Sunday, December 7, 1941, Japan attacked the United States Pacific Fleet at Pearl Harbor. Germany immediately declared war on the United States in solidarity with Japan. This resulted in the United States declaring war on Germany, which was a move that the British people and the Royal Air Force High Command had been hoping for. Ah, you must be Major Thompson. Yes, sir. May I come in? Certainly. Please be seated. Thank you, Air Marshal Wilkins. Thank you. Uh, it's Vice Air Marshal, if you don't mind. Marshal Wilkins is fine. When did you arrive in London? Yesterday. Any problems with your journey? No, uh, no problems at all, uh, but I'm certainly well aware of the problems that do exist here. Unfortunately, all around us. But at the moment, none right above our heads. 
Before we get into the discussion, Marshall Wilkins, let me express to you my personal admiration for the people of England, particularly here in London during the Battle of Britain. It's just an amazing amount of courage expressed there. We have had tremendous support from our civilians in all forms. Well, that's, that's so good. Now, what kind of support can we give you? What do you need from us? Specifically, aircraft. You're talking about uh, bombers, fighters, that sort of thing? Yes, combat aircraft. I, I really hate to tell you this, uh, Marshal Wilkins, since this is your primary request of us, and that is we're going to have to decline for the present moment. Uh, most disappointing. Most disappointing, Major. We have a number of wonderful aircraft that are coming off the drawing boards. But right now, today, everything we've got that flies is in the Pacific. You've got to remember, less than three months ago was Pearl Harbor. Major Thompson, if you don't mind my asking, what is your specialty? Intelligence. Same as mine. Then would you support us sharing intelligence? Not to be dismissive, Major, but we have operatives all over Europe. Yes, sir. And so do we. Hmm. I'd like to see evidence of that. Well, I have that for you. Uh, it's in my valise, which my aide in the lobby is holding for me right now. Three documents that were circulated in the high command of the Luftwaffe during the Battle of Britain. All of them initiated by Hitler himself. Now, one document, which was issued uh, before the Battle of Britain, clearly says that Hitler does not want to target civilians. Hmm. The second document was issued just before the bombing of London. Hitler is furious that the Germans have not maintained air superiority, even gained it, over Great Britain. And then the third document. The third document is from Hitler just before the attack ends. And he's giving his reasons for backing off on subjugating Great Britain, at least for the moment. I'd like to share these documents with my colleagues. You, you mean you do not have these documents? No, I have not. And the fact that you have them, to me, is extraordinary. How about we work on this thing together? <laughs> Indeed. sleep after this. Very good. Lunch should be here in a little while. Mr. Shabrowski. Good morning, Nurse Marie. I hope your day is going well. Honestly, I'm so worried about this boy we have here. Nurse Marie, pardon me for one moment. I must sit down. So, 
this child, this boy, does he have pneumonia like me? No, he was pulled from the wreckage during the blitz. That long ago? He's been here that long. Yes, we believe he had a head injury. Why, does he not speak? Only one word, Joe. It must be his name, li like mine, Joseph. Sufficient heat? Only only in the common areas. And there are no beds in the common areas. Sounds very uncomfortable. It is, but it's still better than well, the alleyways of Dunkirk. Come with me. We'll take your temperature and then see the doctor. Thank you. <sighs> of neurological injury can be such a bloody mystery. There's no signs of bleeding on the brain. Is he walking and standing on his own? Not that I've seen Dr. Binghamton. The thing I'm concerned about is muscle deterioration. He does a little more than just lay there. He just... Not enough to build up his own strength. Nurse Marie, I may have asked you this before, but where do you come from? I come from a small town in western Kansas, Garden City. Ah, okay. Kind of like uh, tornado country and the Wizard of Oz. Tornadoes do exist, but you rarely see them. I remember you telling me about your parents when you moved here during the Great War in 18. That's right. Fell in love with England. Certainly let me know if this young man's ability changes. I will. Bravo, Major Thompson. Outstanding. Well, you must have heard about our raid on Tokyo. Of course. Everyone's talking about it. Very well executed. But tell me about this raid that you're planning. A thousand bombers? Originally, I had thought that if we could get close to 850 planes, I would still call it a thousand plane raid, primarily for the headlines and morale. Obviously. However, now it appears that we no longer have to overestimate our plane numbers because we have achieved our goal. How were you able to do that? The Wellington program. Wellington.
I remember something in the briefing about that. Uh, uh, two engines, like a big glider. It's a kite with engines, but it'll do the job. How many of those thousand planes are Wellingtons? A little over 600. How did you do that? Available materials. Well, more importantly, how were you able to do that with the attack going on in London? Most of them were not assembled in London. Quite a number were assembled in Ireland, Scotland, barns, warehouses, wherever. I must say, what an extraordinary feat of organization. The people working with me on this are quite industrious. Hmm, indeed. But now, as I recall, the Wellington does not have a large payload at all. Right you are. That's why we primarily are planning to use incendiaries. Incendiaries? Well, now what would be your target? Hamburg. Or, secondarily, Cologne, depending on the weather. So, by targeting a city, what you'll do is create a mirror image of what happened here in London with your civilian population. Major, the English people are perceived as being a very patient lot. However, that patience has run out. The English people now seek retribution. Good evening. Do you have a dark lager? Of course. May I have one, please? Busy night. Was well, that some kind of joke? Who are you? Colonel Andrei Sanislavsky, Polish Air Force. <laughs> Polish Air Force? I ain't no such thing. I assure you, sir, we exist. Well, I remember the bleeding Nazis kicking your ass. In 39, the Polish Army and Air Force fought a valiant struggle. They squashed you like a bug. Sir, we endured 35 days of bloody, brutal, vicious combat. You want bloody? You want brutal? I'll give you bloody and brutal. That was the trenches. That was 1918. Mr. Drake, for someone who works with the public, I would suggest a better disposition. It might help bring some customers in here. At the present, I am in charge of the Polish air crews. Two hundred men are housed a few blocks from here. Why is it that I need know this? When they are in need of recreation, will they be welcomed at this establishment? Well, they got some of this? If they do not pay their tabs, they will answer to me. All right, then. Come in. Vice Air Marshal Wilkins? Quite correct. And you are? Colonel Andrei Stanislavski, Polish Air Command. At your service, sir. Pleasure to make your acquaintance. Likewise. Please be seated. Thank you. I'm happy that England was able to assist you in your departure from France. That assistance was most appreciated, sir. So, how are you and your men doing? We are alive, which was something 
in serious doubt before we arrived in your country. I imagine that they're quartering you in those drafty warehouses in Poplar. A far improvement over the gutters of Dunkirk, sir. Colonel, uh, it's my understanding that you have some 60 men with aircraft training and expertise. That number, sir, is a serious underestimate. Well, please provide me with the correct number. We have 60 pilots, sir, in addition to navigators, radio operators, and some very fine mechanics. The number would, would top 200. Very good. So, Colonel, regarding light bombers, how many crews can you put together for me? 50 minimum. Excellent. We must have a detailed discussion. Uh, the RAF is planning operations for bombing multiple sites in western Germany. Are you all right, Colonel? Am I to understand you wish to use my men in a bombing operation against Germany? Part of a large operation, certainly. The RAF will be providing the planes and additional training. Of course. This operation will be executed in cooperation with the United States Army Air Corps. I'm having a meeting tomorrow evening with Major Thompson of the United States Army Air Corps. Would you like to be part of that meeting? Absolutely. I would be most honored to be there. Please understand that my men and I are available for anything you have in mind. Splendid. Tomorrow afternoon, before meeting with Major Thompson, I would like for you to take a look at the aircraft that your men will be working with. It's called the Wellington. Joe.
okay, Joe? Your stomach hurts? Are you hurting here? You're hungry. Well, boy, let's go get you something to eat. This is a big step for this young man. Do you mean he walked to the loo by himself? Yes, he did. No trouble walking? Not that I saw. What was he doing when you found him? Standing on a stool. What was he doing on a stool? Looking at himself in the mirror. Did you have to help him down? No, he swayed a little bit when he stepped down, but he recovered. Jolly good news. What about the respiratory ailments that the others are complaining about? Is this young man affected? No, I isolated him. That was a good move on your part. Thank you. Do you think you might be able to get me some help in here? <sighs> Nurse Marie, I don't know. I know you've been holding us down primarily by yourself. But the war effort is pulling more nurses away to train for field hospitals. I understand. The war is going to get bigger? Much bigger, I'm afraid. The war is going to need more doctors and nurses as well, and they'll be fractionating my time again. We're both pretty good at what we do. Yes, a blessing and a curse. Wiem, co to jest. Jestem nowy. Nie daj, da, da, da. Ja daj, da, da, da. Ja daj, da, da, da. Ja daj, da, da, da. Hitler ti sina na kurva, ti benje po mientach. Ja wiem co to jest. I know what that is. Dobrze, dobrze. Ah, samo. Wiem, ja wiem co to robi. I know what that does. A little different, but. Mój komrady, oni będzie... Tak, oni może. Yes, they can. This will not... This will not be problem. Es ist ein krasser Irrtum, den Sie und Ihre Regierung begehen. Der größte Teil der Welt hat sich mit uns verbündet in diesem Kampf gegen Furcht und Tyrannei. Ein Kampf, den Sie und Ihre Regierung angefangen haben. Es wird keine Invasion geben. Bald werden es Royal Air Force Flieger sein, die Bomben über deutschen Städten abwerfen. Bald werden es ihre Familien sein, die aufschreien. Bald werden sie verstehen, was wir durchmachen mussten.
Und vergessen Sie nicht, Sie haben es selbst verursacht. Just me, Henry. I had an interesting day. I fetched a sandwich before I went in. And ran into Charlie. Charlie? You mean Charlie from the pub? Indeed. He told me about last Friday. About what? He says some new flyers came in. And all you could do was raise your voice and make them feel unwelcome. What business Charlie got reporting to you what I'm saying? He's just worried about you, Henry, that's all. Yeah, well, welcome to me. I remember, Henry, just as you do. Last Friday marked one year. Yeah, since we lost our boy. Georgie. I'm feeling like I... Like I can move beyond that now. And I don't want to move beyond that. I understand. Not knowing is incredibly painful. Remember. We can talk about anything, anytime you need. I'm sorry, I... I ain't been listening to your broadcasts. I said I would. And I ain't picked up on, on German. I promised you I would 20 years ago when we married. Here we go again. You know what? I ought to hate Germany. I really should. But they come up with you, didn't they? You gotta give them that. So, Colonel Stennis... Andre, please. Andre, it is. Now, Air Marshal Wilkins gave you a look today at the Wellington. What did you think of it? Yes, and I found it to be quite geometric. So right you are. Major Thompson has likened it to a kite with engines. If that is an accurate description, then the plane could glide a great distance in case of engine failure. Well, it certainly could. Did you get a chance to sit in the pilot's seat and get that view? Yes, and I was amazed. Everything was so, so new. As a matter of fact, that particular Wellington rolled off of assembly approximately two weeks ago. The design and everything is so new. Please understand that when Germany invaded my homeland, we fought back with what you call uh, antiques. Well, well, do you think these new planes will be a problem with your pilots? Quite the opposite. They would love it, especially Josef. Joseph? Joseph Zabrowski, our squadron leader, and perhaps our best pilot. But I do have a technical question. And that is? Understanding the relatively light payload. 4,500 kilos. Uh, that's about average for a light bomber. But considering the design of the Wellington, I was thinking that it could have another usage. That's quite astute and perceptive. A uh, squadron of Wellingtons is being outfitted uh, for launching torpedoes. A new mission 
For an aircraft, it can fly low and slow. Submarine Hunter. Yes, but this is a bombing mission. Uh, we have some of our new Lancasters, which are four engine bombers, uh, but the majority of the planes in this mission will be Wellingtons. And the number will probably be close to 600. Vice Marshal, in total, how many bombers do you intend on sending on this mission? I think that the number will probably top out at around a thousand. Boja moi, that is astounding. Well, we would hope with the raid of this magnitude that we'd be able to bring an early end to the war. But if this does not occur, then what will happen? As you heard the air marshal say, the production of the Lancaster is going at full steam. And certainly, we plan to send over as many heavy bombers as we can, as soon as we can, beginning early next year. So I would imagine a year from now, these skies over here will be filled with heavy bombers from the RAF, and from the Army Air Corps. Andre, as I mentioned yesterday, we're already planning further strikes against Germany beyond this first massive raid. Using your Wellingtons. And crews like yours. Good evening, Mr. Drake. Is this one of your pilots? Yes, one of our best. Josef Shabros here, squadron leader. <laughs> Oi, Charles, did you hear that? Squadron leader, no less. Squadrons of what, actually? Where are you blokes from? Poland. Poland? Good Lord. I thought there was nothing left of Poland. For your sake, sir, I hope that is not true. So what did you pilots fly back home? Kites? Our vessels may have been antiquated, but we fought like devils. <laughs> so, Yosef, tell me, what have you seen here in London that you admire the most? The women. Lots of pretty cats. <laughs> hey, Polish. A word of advice. Keep away from English ladies. Thanks, Henry. That should cover us. We will order now. Oh, good morning, Nurse Marie. How are you today? Well, look at you. You must be feeling better. Oh, yes. I have no fever, and I got some wonderful news today. Tell me more. Well, your wonderful RAF has given me an opportunity. And this man, right here, that you are looking at, will get to fly again. I see. So back in Poland, you were a pilot? I was, and your Royal Air Force is giving me and all the other refugee pilots a chance to fly again because they've lost so many pilots in this battle for Britain. This country has lost many people. And so has Poland and everywhere else those Nazi devils have touched. I imagine you'll need a work release for the service. I, I will need one, yes. And after you give me one, I intend to go for a very nice walk. And I'm going to smile at everyone I see. And I'm sure you'll find your way to a pub. Now that, that sounds like a great idea. You'll need a follow-up next week. Whatever you think is necessary, Nurse Marie. Ah, talk yeah! <laughs> we are flying again! <laughs> your Royal Air Force was kind enough to take us on. Now I remember why I hate poets. Because they don't know when to keep their mouth shut! Joseph, Joseph, 
Do you need something? Potion. Polish. I am here to give you a report. About what? About your English ladies. Captain Shabrowski? Last night, I had two of them come with me to my quarters, and they were so grateful. You liar! The fight! This I can appreciate! Stand it! Who spoke a shit? Both of you! My God! What do you want to do? Make the Nazis work easier for them? Do you know how many of you will return to see your families? We are fighting an enemy that is like a vicious cancer, devouring everything in its path. Sudetenland, Holland, France, Poland. Will England be next? You should be like brothers. You are not fighting for Poland. You are not fighting only for England. You are fighting for the world. I forgot to ask you earlier. What is it that you fly? Spitfire. Spitfire? That is a glorious aircraft. I shall call you Spitfire from now on. Cheers. Let's go. Hey, Charlie, you know what? I think he might be one of the good ones. Mr. Shabrowski, it looks like you're clear on your follow-up. Excellent. And I want you to know, I did take your advice about sleeping in the common room. I had to move a bed out there if you'd get me out of the cold. And it worked. Nurse Marie? I'm sorry. I'm just worried about this boy we have. The one you told me about? Yes. Is he getting worse? He's getting better, physically. I see. But he still only says one word, Joe. Would you mind if I talk to him? I don't know. Oh, you see, I, I have some experience with People like him who have what you would call shell shock. Okay. Good evening, gentlemen. This is Preston Dahl, the voice of the Rhine. And I am here tonight with a special message for my Englishmen. Have you forgotten your origins? You are Anglo-Saxons from the Fatherland. For centuries, our countries have been very close. And I would like to be close to you again. Remember your Hanover monarchs, King George, and your magnificent Queen Victoria? Your current royal family is German, for the true name of their house is saxe coburg gotha not Windsor. We share the same blood. We should not be shedding each other's. The Luftwaffe is no longer bombing your island. It is time that our peoples unite once more. For we are both part of the Aryan nation. But instead, my fine pilots of the Royal Air Force, you are collaborating with the Poles. They are Slavs. They are too feeble. They are too cowardly to operate aircraft. 
you are risking your lives working with them. They are only suitable for hard labor. You place yourselves in grave danger and they will degrade you. Too many young men have been killed already. You deserve to share in the glory of the master race. Reclaim your heritage and join us. Someone here that would like to speak with you. Hello, Joe. Your, your name is Joe? You are Joe? Don't you know something funny? My name is Joe, too. I am Joe, and you are Joe. Your name is Joe, and I am Joe. No? Not Joe? Joe! It's Joe! Pleased to meet you, George. I have to go check something. His parents are looking for him. I think his last name is Drake. Did you say Drake? That's part of my family who was lost in the Blitz. Tomorrow's the big night, Andre. Your boys up to it? They have never been more so. Andre, once the bombers are airborne, Major Thompson and I will be here in my office waiting. We want to be close to the communication center so we can get those immediate updates as they come in. And you are more than welcome to wait here with us. My wife was killed when Germany invaded our homeland, Poland. Oh gosh, I'm sorry to hear that. Thank you. She often said that I was a very good father. I would like to play the role of the good father once more. How so? When my boys take off for that mission, I want to be on that airfield watching them leave. And I would also like to be there when they return. You're gonna have a long wait, Andre. I will have my wife to speak with. With your permission. Of course, most certainly. Problem followed. Colonel Hoffman, I understand you have an emergency matter to discuss. Yeah. We have received information that a large RAF formation is in the air and headed towards Germany. What is their target? 
At first we thought it was Hamburg, but uh, the weather in Hamburg is not ideal for this type of raid. So uh, we don't believe that's a target. The British would know this. Of course they would. So where do you think they will strike? Well, don't worry. It won't be here in Berlin. The RAF doesn't have enough long-range bombers to launch such a large raid here. What precautions are you taking? Well, of course, everyone is on high alert. On the under-aircraft batteries, of course, and BF-109s are ready to respond immediately. How many bombers do you think they have? Our operatives have lost count. I do not understand how the British are able to man so many planes. We shot down so many of their aircraft. Yeah, they recruited them from the refugees that they evacuated at Dunkirk. What nationality are these refugees? Well, it varies, but the majority of the pilots are Poles. Dirty Poles. Spitfires! They can't say I'm not coming to us. Got the Was it done, Navrogli? Gosze unter Strevia, proszę maską unter Niebie. Something special on mass communications radio, lads. Don't lose focus. Good evening. This is the Dresden Dow, the voice of the Pilots of the Royal Air Force, I am very, very disappointed in you. I offered you friendship. I invited you to share in our triumph. And you have betrayed your ancestry. You have made an alliance with these dirty Poles. How could you? When will you learn that Polishness equals subhumanity? The Poles, the Jews, and the Gypsies are on the same inferior level. Did you think you could deceive us? We are watching you. We follow your moves. We know that your aircraft are coming towards us. But it is not too late. Turn back! Turn back now! I hope you will listen to me. 
But if you do not, I shall tell you of what will happen if you drop one bomb on German territory. Poland is ours. We shall exact our justice upon the entire population, upon all the families and friends of those in your planes. Our Eins and Truppen are most efficient. We shall cleanse the east of these vermin. Captain, this is navigations. Twenty minutes to target. Bombardier, check a target Should I 
try to hit the cathedral. Yeah, yeah, Costola. By the time of your next broadcast, I'll have an assessment of the damage. But it is substantial? Yeah, it is. I have many friends in Cologne. They attended the university. I visited them many times. It was so beautiful. Yeah. Go with the personal angle. That works best. It is personal now. We are over France now, Captain. That woman is on broadcast again. This is not a good evening. This is Sebastian Dow, the voice of Ferrari. And I know you can hear me as you fly over France after your brutal devastation of Cologne. Are you proud of yourself that you slaughtered so many civilians? Ferrari would never engage in such dishonorable warfare. During the Blitzkrieg, we only raided military and industrial targets. But you deliberately attacked Cologne, a beautiful historic city. Its university, its art and architecture were renowned. It had no fortifications, no soldiers. Most of the men were away fighting. The inhabitants were women, children and the elderly. How could they do you any harm? And yet you flew in and launched your explosives, your incendiary bombs, right into the residential areas. The people were engulfed in the spreading flames and they burned alive. So many innocent lives were lost and so many more were left wounded with no place to live. You destroyed 3,000 buildings, homes, hospitals, museums, churches, schools, stores. Less than 10 for any kind of military function. 
We will never forget this. Did you think that you would break us? You have underestimated the will of the German people. We are far stronger than you can ever imagine. We will fight until victory is ours. Tehaner Kurva! Resounding success, congratulations. Have, have, have you seen any initial uh, numbers on losses yet? Just coming in. It appears that it's gonna be around four to 5%. Much better than our boys in Tokyo. Do you think this will help you achieve your major goal? That Germany will see you can nearly destroy a major city in one night and want an early end of the war? Major, I don't know. It may simply strengthen the resolve of the Germans. But one thing we do know is that they now know that they are vulnerable. And whatever death and destruction they pour down on us will get poured down on them in return post haste. Now, it looks like we're the only people left in the building. They're all out celebrating. And I am too in my own way. I have a request. May I call you Rob? Why certainly. What can I do for you? I would like for us to have future meetings at my personal residence. Um, are you a drinking man? May I call you Malcolm? Certainly. I really have a fondness for brandy myself. It just so happens that at my residence, I have a healthy supply of brandy, but also quite a substantial amount of cognac. Begging to be consumed. Sweet cheers for the Royal Air Force! Hip hip! Hooray! That you've been waiting a long time for this day. You have no idea. When do I get to see my boy? We'll go see him after we finish filling out the forms. It's been almost a year. <laughs> <laughs> 